Coming up on Mountain News this morning, police in Nashville released the body cam footage of a deadly shooting at a private Christian school and threatening messages sent by a student at a community and technical college in our region leads to the school to go into lockdown. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. Six o'clock here. I'm Dakota Make Gris. It's Wednesday. Thanks so much for waking up with us. And your favorite morning team is back. Brandon's back. And, you know, really, when, when Brandon, when you're not here, I have such a, a hard time to process that. I understand. But then when you're also, when you're not on TV, everybody asks, where's Brandon? Where's Brandon? <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? He's still, he's still with us. I'm still, he, he's I'm still, still here. here. Still yeah. around somewhere. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's basically like clockwork now. It, it mm -hmm. was every two months, it was every month, and now it's every two months again yeah. uh, that I'll be off on a Monday, probably yeah. late in the month to go to Cleveland, and then yeah. the next day I'll be back at the house working from home. But yeah. this morning, back in action here in the studio, and we've got some chilly temperatures out there for my return to air, and you'll see outside the WYMT studios here in Hazard, some calm conditions, but chilly. We're seeing temperatures there. That's the difference. Monticello now showing 26. That's the Mattis sensor instead of the airport sensor. Again, the cross the region there this morning. Actually, I think it's the airport sensor because it's a little bit colder than the other ones there, but you see a lot of 30s out there this morning. A couple of uh, 20s, Irvin and Monticello right now. Everybody else is in the low to mid 30s. Looks like our warmest spot uh, spots, I guess, is Logan, Jackson, and Harlan all at 36 state and region wide. 32 across the river Cincinnati, 40 down in Knoxville. Hot spot this morning, 38 in Nashville, 33 in Purdue. Duke of four, uh, 29 rather in Ashland and 37 the Tri-Cities. Heading up to about 60 degrees later on this afternoon. It's going to be a nice day, but it's also going to be sunshine filled. Enjoy that. That is not going to last for the next little bit. Maybe, to, maybe today and tomorrow, but by Friday, it's going to turn back into umbrella weather. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you. Nashville Metro Police have released body camera footage of the Covenant School shooting. Monday morning, police received a 911 call about the shooting when 28-year-old Audrey Hale arrived at the school. The shooter gained access through a side door and went upstairs to the second floor and shot at police through the windows. Hale hit the windshield of a police vehicle. Once police arrived to diminish the shooting, authorities engaged in gunfire with the shooter before ultimately killing them. We have no evidence that individuals were specifically targeted this school, this church building, was a target of the shooter, but we have no information at present to indicate that the shooter was specifically targeting any one of the six individuals who were murdered. Six people were shot and killed by hell at the school. Three of the victims were children. A student at Southeastern Kentucky Community and Technical College in Middlesboro reportedly sent threatening messages to several staff members Tuesday morning, uh, prompted the school to go into lockdown and a police response. The Middlesboro Police Department responded to the situation and eventually gave the go-ahead for students to evacuate and go home after saying there was no longer a perceived threat. Sergeant Harvey Johnson with the police department says the school did exactly what it should have done in that situation and he understands there is a heightened awareness to threats, especially after that school shooting in Nashville. Nowadays, any kind of threat that you get on a campus or, or at a school, you, you have to take those as real and you have to, you have to investigate gate those and get to the bottom of them to, to see if it's a real threat or not. Police say they have been in contact with the person who sent the threatening emails but they are unsure if there will be any charges brought against them. A small Central Kentucky Christian school recently hired a school resource officer in hopes of preventing what happened in Nashville. Danville Christian Academy now has former Boyle County Sheriff Derek Robbins as its SRO. Robbins has been the school's resource officer for several months now. He jumped at the opportunity and says the new sheriff, Taylor Bottoms, worked out an arrangement for this school to have an SRO along with existing public schools. Having someone in the school system is, is a huge deterrent and uh, it's going to make the kids safer everywhere, not, at, not just in Boyle County, but everywhere. Gaining access to the building is also a lot more difficult than simply opening the door. There are secure entrances throughout the school, upstairs and down, at several locations, each requiring a key fob or keypad entry. Some parents may be wondering how to talk to their children about mass school shootings. 
Dr. Catherine L. Stone is a licensed psychologist over in Lexington. She says parents shouldn't shy away from talking to their children about it, especially if they are eight years old or older. I say, tell me what you heard today about uh, the incident in Nashville or phrase it of the, some people being hurt and then have them tell you what they know and then you can ask them what they feel. Well, Dr. Stone says this way the child is who's leading that conversation. She says when the child is done expressing their thoughts to validate their feelings. Yesterday, Governor Andy Bashir ordered flags to be lowered to have staff in remembrance of the Nashville victims. All flags at state buildings will be at half staff until sunset on Friday. The governor encourages other people and businesses to join the Commonwealth in remembering the victims. A bill making Kentucky a second, a second Amendment sanctuary will become law without the governor's signature. House Bill 153 would ban Kentucky police from enforcing any federal gun ban. Those against the bill criticized it for punishing officers sworn to support the Commonwealth and the country. And Kentucky is cracking down on recovery homes. A new law helps to weed out homes that are not legitimate in helping people in recovery. Kelsey Soto talked with people in the addiction recovery community about efforts to help people safely transition back into society. Changes are coming to recovery centers across the Commonwealth. By July 1st of next year, housing facilities will need certification and be subject to more oversight and regulation, hoping to eliminate those with bad intentions. So what we're trying to do are get, you know, raise the standard, have some accountability, get these folks out of the field, and that way the people who are seeking help can find it. John Wilson with ARC says for far too long, greed and a disregard for health, well-being and safety has really made it more challenging for those actually trying to help those in recovery. I think that these bad actors perpetuate some of the stigma that, that surrounds this field, which is unfortunate. And I think, you know, if you're looking for help for a loved one and you Google, you know, this, there's really no way to differentiate for the layperson between a good actor and a bad actor. House Bill 248 signed into law Friday sets requirements ensuring residents are abstaining from alcohol and drugs and facilities will now also be subject to inspection. Importantly, it sets key standards for recovery housing to ensure that our most vulnerable population is protected. An estimated six Kentuckians die each day from an overdose. It's a trend that will take statewide effort to turn around. Because when we open up access to quality mental health and substance use disorder treatment, lives change, the stigma is reduced, and we begin to save our parents, our friends, and our family. In Lexington, Kelsey Soto, WKYT. Lawmakers gather today for the final two days of the 2023 legislative session. There are still some controversial bills that could pass. We're keeping an eye on Senate Bill 115. That's the public drag show ban. The bill has, it has had its first committee reading it needs a second reading before a vote can be called. We're also tracking Senate Bill 47, which is the medical marijuana bill. That bill passed the Senate and, uh, and has also had a first reading in the House Committee. The legislative session ends Thursday and lawmakers adjourn until 2024. Six oh eight. The forecast continues to stay fairly steady this morning. Just a touch on the chilly side. Let's go to Lake Cumberland there in Pulaski County. Just a little bit of uh, kind of like maybe fog on the horizon there. Of course, near those bodies of water, fog is more likely. But most of us just looking kind of a quiet this morning. There temperatures again back and forth with the uh, Mesonet and the uh, Mattis sensor there at Monticello. The Mattis sensor showing warmer than the airport sensor. But we're still in the twenties in Irvine and Ashland this morning. Everybody else is in the low to mid. 30s, some upper 30s in spots there like 36 in Harlan, Monticello, Jackson, Prestonsburg, and Logan. Grundy closing in on those 20s as well over in southwest Virginia. Sunshine, beautiful, enjoy it. Get out there and do things you've been putting off outside. I know I've got to do a few things at the house, like uh, change a light bulb out on my front porch and do some other things. But again, just get out there and do what you need to do today and tomorrow as well because once Friday sets in, we're going to have some action. I'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes. Dakota. Brandon, thank you so much. When we come back here on Mountain News this morning, a man, a man once freed of charges related to the death of his girlfriend will once again face time in prison for the same crime.